Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kate's independent media production. Today, we are continuing our foray into how much is too much muffling <laughs> with the snare drum. If you've been keeping up with us, we just did a little bit of a deep dive into basically like what the limits were of muffling toms in terms of having them still behave like toms, give us something musical and kind of fit into the overall sound of the kit and a mix and things like that. And after we did all that and we were playing it with that lively happen and snare drum sound, decided to go the other way, do kind of a similar trip here. It's going to be a few more iterations because there's a lot of different things that people commonly do to their snare drums. I think at least, I mean, we've seen a lot of stuff happen to snare drums. And so we wanted to try about as many of them as we could think of. Up front, I will tell you that we definitely, definitely have a back-to-back -back comparison at the end of the video of all of these in a line, so you don't have to click through and try to compare them that way, because there is going to be a whole lot of them. First things first, let's hear what this drum sounds like with nothing on it today. It's my Ludwig Chrome Over Brass 65 by 14 It's been in a lot of videos, sort of like a middle-of-the-road general snare drum. Zingy and pingy, it's in the upper register a little bit today, which is kind of nice for muffling situations because a lot of those will lower its overall kind of perceived pitch because we're adding mass to the head. And it's going to give us a lot to work with in terms of a little bit to way too much. First up is probably the one that I use the most in normal, not experimental recording situations, which is two or three little pieces of gaff tape. This is really just to take the highest high part of the overtones out and focus the center sound of the snare drum just a little bit. This is the most subtle of everything we're doing today. I picked up on this from a combination of seeing videos on the internet of things that looked like this when I was younger and also of going to studios and seeing their snare drums and seeing that people were putting tape on them in this manner. Now, the big variable here is A, how many of them you put on there and B, how close or far they are from the rim because as you move away from the rim, the parts of the sound they affect starts to change. This is a great option for kind of sticking with what is largely an open sound and a natural sound to the snare drum with just a tiny amount of control. Additionally, this doesn't take up a lot of real estate on the head, so if you're going to be using other implements or brushes, things like that, you can organize these things to where you're not going to run into them when you're playing. So if you need to use the edge or do sort of like lateral motions and stuff, you're not going to end up getting stuck on the muffling. Next up, one that I've never personally done, but I've seen a lot, it is the tape square.
If you saw the earlier episode about the toms, we did triangles on the toms. We're doing a square today. We're trying to, you know, equal opportunity geometrics here. And the interesting thing about this is that it touches the very edges of the head and it also traverses the center a little bit without going right in the center. So you are affecting the overtones that live at the edge and you're also affecting the fundamental a little bit. So even though this isn't a ton of tape, we actually, you know, we ripped the strips in half so they'd be, you know, maybe between like uh, three quarters of an inch and an inch across. Uh, it's a fairly dramatic difference. This is a nice option, again, for not adding a ton of mass, but getting a fairly drastic effect in terms of the way that the high end of the drum is behaving, and also in terms of the focus of the fundamental and the fatness. If the little bits around the edge are not enough for you to maybe like play in the center without catching the rim and like you're still getting too much overtones and wobble and stuff, if you start to bring that tape in and also add a little bit of surface area in this manner, it starts to get you a little closer to having a warm center sound with not a lot of overtones while still being a big sound that you can utilize with a rim shot. Number three, tried and true, the E-ring. This takes me immediately to the 70s and the 80s, super dead, super kind of up close snare drum sound. Lots of videos of Steve Gadd with these things, everybody else that was kind of in that world of recording. This is starting to get us into a situation where this drum doesn't sound like it sounded before. It's starting to sound like it's a different drum. And there's a lot of factors that are affecting that despite this being such a simple addition that is inexpensive to purchase and is reusable and all that. We're starting to get into a, a more dramatic, different character. E-rings are not a thing that I use a ton on snare drums, but I do bring one along for a really specific situation, and that is when I want to hit the center of the drum fairly hard, maybe with the butt of the stick, without catching the rim, and get a really warm sound, regardless of if it's tuned low or tuned high. Because it's all the way around evenly, we're not getting any kind of interruption of the tuning or any kind of wobbly overtones. It's taking us right to just a fat, fundamental punch right in the middle. All right, now we're gonna step it up a notch with something similar. It's the donut-shaped <laughs> ring from Big Fat Snare Drum. Additionally, if you're interested in hearing more of any of these examples, if you bop over to the Patreon and check it out at the Dynasonic level and above, you get to hear all of the demos that we did today in their entirety. Those extra ones that are not featured in this video, there's gonna be much longer sort of playing examples and things like that, and you can really dig into how all these things behave. At this point, we're basically covering up almost all of the drum head. There's not a lot of original real estate of the drum head left anymore. And that means that brushes are going to be troublesome, rolls, as you may have noticed, a little bit troublesome. But on the other hand, this is also its own unique sound that is useful for a lot of things. It's very specific. It's very punchy. It is different than the other specific punchy things that we've done so far. And again, it's also a thing that's reusable. It's really easy to put on and off. It does sort of take you from the original sound to an extreme different sound in a fraction of a second and anything that we can get like that is definitely something that's worth having in the arsenal.
Now my personal favorite popping up next, if I want to go all the way away from overtones and openness and all that, it's the bandana. What we're talking about here is a piece of cloth that's very, very thin, very, very lightweight that we are covering the entirety of the batter head with. The rim shot sound is okay. Hitting it in the center, rolls, all that stuff, super pleasing, super warm, a lot of low end. It's really kind of giving us the girth of the drum. And, you know, whether you're using drum G's or a drum key like I sometimes do to hold it on there, it's easy to flip it off and get back to your original sound or use any part of it. I think of this as the most versatile muffling option for a snare drum, and it's the one that I always, always take with me. And last but certainly not least, because it's a little bit left of center, we wanted to demonstrate the muffling aspect of putting a splash cymbal on your snare drum. I think it's fair to say that if you're putting a splash cymbal on your snare drum, muffling is not the main thing that you're going for. You're going for a sound that is associated with having a cymbal on your snare drum. Incidentally, having that weight on there is also muffling it. We're getting a lot of sound of the cymbal and the way that it kind of claps against the head and touches the rim and everything, but it does also defeat a ton of overtones, whether you have it strapped down with a drum G or similar, or if it's just jumping around on there, because it is much more weight than a lot of the options that we use today. But it's also, again, reusable, easy to take on and off, stays put, makes a amazingly different sound and a wonderfully electronic sound as well, which if you've seen our recent video on electronic sounds, we are huge fans of. As we've moved through all of these examples, we are going from wide open to fairly niche ideas here, fairly niche sounds. It doesn't mean that you can't use them for a lot of things, but it is worth remembering that none of these things will work all the time. And especially with things like putting cymbals on there, or maybe even like some of these muffling situations that cover the entire head, they're not for everything, they're for a really specific sound. And that can be an inspiration, it can be an opportunity to insert that into a more traditional sort of situation or atmosphere or whatever, but but the main thing to take away from this is that there's a lot of exploration you can do without actually tuning the drum at all. And obviously we talk about tuning here a lot. But if you're into the sound of your drum and you're like, I don't want to tune it all the time. I want to keep this sound, but how can I have more options? All of the stuff that we had today fits in my cymbal bag. I mean, all of it. And it doesn't really weigh much of anything. So this sort of takes us from taking one drum to the gig to taking, you know, eight or nine options at least that might inspire you, might inspire the band, and will definitely give you a dramatically different sound. All right, finally, we have made it back-to-back -back comparison. And it is worth noting that nobody here grabbed a drum key. Nobody retuned this. We even checked it at the end. The pitch of the head is exactly the same as when we started.
listening to all that, it is fair to say that there's a lot of options with a nicely tuned snare drum. It doesn't need to be the most expensive snare drum or the fanciest anything in the world. It can be very run of the mill, but as soon as you start to experiment with these things, you can go way out in the weeds and get some really, really great stuff. Some of the muffling that we did today, for me, most of the time, would be excessive because I like to have as open of a sound as I can while still modifying it when I use these things to each their own in terms of what's too much. And again, also, if you are thinking of changing the tuning a little bit, these things interact with different tunings in different ways. So if you're having a sort of a choky thing with a certain kind of muffling that you're doing, it could be possible that a slightly different tuning wouldn't be choky with that muffling option. And it's really worth checking out all the details once you get into the sounds that you like. Please follow the link below, bop over to the Patreon, check out all the extra things we have over there, including all of the extended playing examples from today, anecdotes, symbol series, tons of stuff going on over there. We're super excited about it, and we are always, always, always making more. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for listening to all of the things that we did here today. I know it was a lot, but I feel like it was hopefully educational. I had a lot of fun doing it for sure. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you hear about all of the new videos we have coming out. And lastly, not only do I want to know about your muffling things that you like to do to your snare drum, but we really, 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 really want to know when you went too far. Because <laughs> I could definitely think of the times that I went too far. And sometimes, you know, people will say that the bandana is too far. Sometimes the tape is too far. You never, ever know. Every situation is different, but we would love to hear about yours. Thank you.